All right, good morning, London. <clears throat> so I'm Jussi. Um, I'm from Nitro Games from Finland. And uh, for those who don't know who we are, uh, we're a 10 year old gaming company. Uh, we are essentially 40 people in two studios in Finland. And uh, during those 10 years, uh, our focus has always been in making games for gamers, simply put. Um, last five years, our focus has been exclusively on making mobile games. And uh, more specifically, we do real-time multiplayer games on mobile. And uh, <clears throat> what we're talking today is uh, how life is when you're a sort of indie company and you're a public company at the same time. So that's from June last year, uh, which is when we listed Nitro Games in Stockholm, in Nasdaq First North. And uh, basically, uh, the point of this pitch right now is to go through how we actually went about that, why we IPO'd in the first place, how, how do we see life as a public company, what it actually means in practice in our everyday life, and uh, also a little bit about what it means for future. So let's have a look. I think one of the key things to state in the beginning is that uh, when we look at world and when we talk about IPO, it's not an exit. Uh, I think a lot of, lot of parties uh, treat the whole IPO topic as a means of an exit. And for some companies and some entrepreneurs, it might very well be that. But for us, it definitely was not. Uh, for us, we saw IPO as an opportunity to have a new start, to take the company to the next level, one step further, one step higher. So it, it was basically a tool to move forward, uh, by no, no means an end of a road, but a beginning. And uh, <clears throat> in general, uh, why we IPO'd and uh, how do we view the world, that what, what it actually means. Uh, I think the key thing is that uh, we feel that being a public means that you have a platform. It's a, it, it's a platform for several purposes. Uh, one of them is obviously funding. When you go public, you typically raise funds, sometimes more, sometimes less, but you typically do raise funds. Uh, what it means from fundraising perspective is that uh, essentially at that point, you already have a platform that gives you access for further funds, should you want to raise more capital uh, later down the line. Uh, for example, we uh, went public in June. Uh, we did our first uh, additional funding round already in October last year. So, so the platform exists and that makes your life easier uh, when it comes to fundraising. Uh, the other thing is that uh, all of these businesses are about uh, making shareholders happy in the end of the day. So uh, one of the key things about being public is that you have an actual valuation 24-7 uh, uh, every single day of the year. You know what your company value is. And that alone is a topic that brings value to the shareholders, as well as the fact that what they actually have in their hands is something that's liquid, something that they can get rid of if they want to, and they know the price tag of that. Uh, in addition to directly money-related things, uh, what this platform brings to us is basically the fact that since we are a public company, uh, it means that somebody somewhere has done a decent amount of due diligence and gone through all the records, whether it's financial or, or legal or, or whatever it would be. So it gives a little bit of credibility that what you have in, having uh, under the name Nitro Games is actually something that's concrete and something that somebody has already inspected. Uh, it also means that all of the numbers and documentation is available online. So when we now, for example, go into a business negotiation with another party, whether it's about a distribution deal or marketing deal or whatever it could be, uh, the whole process is easier because we can say that everything is up there online. Go check out on our website. That's all you're going to get, and that's all that everybody gets to see. So the whole process of negotiating becomes a lot easier because you are transparent. Everything is out there available already. So essentially, uh, I feel that being a public company uh, in the style that we are, it, it's basically multiple solutions in one package that make your life a little bit easier when we talk about the actual business of making games and releasing games. So that takes care of several aspects there. Uh, <clears throat> how we actually did it, um, it's more or less half a year of fun. Uh, so basically, we started in, in, in January uh, last year, and uh, we rang the bell in, in Stockholm, Nasdaq in, in June. So roughly six months, give or take. And um, during that six months, uh, it, it's relatively hectic times. Uh, you have the 
have the whole sort of technical process going on with a lot of applications to different different parties, uh, applications to Nasdaq, you need to make your shares actually public, you need to have annual general meetings or general meetings to make certain decisions and so on and so on. So a lot of formalities and to make sure that you do those correctly and in correct order, you need to work with advisors. So that's what, what's involved there. Then also a lot of legal paperwork or, or digital paper, paperwork anyway, but a lot of legal documentation that needs to be either checked or created or whatever it could be. So a lot of that. Uh, in addition to those things, uh, there's obviously a decent amount of investor presentations involved because in order to successfully IPO a company, you need to have investors who are actually believing in what you're doing and what you're saying and join your company as part of the IPO. So you need to go out there and meet those investors. So prepare to do a lot of this stuff as well. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's so many parties involved uh, that a uh, big, big part of the time also goes into a lot of meetings with different parties, keeping everybody updated, keeping everybody comfortable, because in this type of process, there's typically quite a lot of stress and doubts and all, all those things going on all the time. So, so it takes a, a lot of focus to make sure that uh, your shareholders, your potential new investors, your employees, your board, your whatever, everybody's calm and you know, relaxed that things are moving forward and everybody stays, stays positive about the thing. Uh, but in addition to that, that's the sort of IPO related thing. The key beef that uh, I would want to underline is that during those six months, the secret to success is not really in those things. Those you need to do, uh, that's like a simple thing. But the key thing is focusing your business. Like if you sort of forget that I'm actually running a game company here while you're doing the IPO, I, I'm pretty sure you're guaranteed to fail. So you need to make sure that you focus on your actual business and drive that forward parallel to this IPO process because that delivers everybody the message that these guys are now going through this process. Everybody understands they might be slightly busy or slightly stressed, but still you got to deliver on your business, deliver news and progress there as well. And those two combined, I think that's, that's how you can make, get it done. But in the end of the day, six months of fun. Um, <clears throat> so then we IPO'd. Uh, how does life look after that? Um, I was trying to think of one word that would sum it up, and uh, I think it's interaction. So uh, essentially, being a public company means that uh, uh, you need to be able to communicate. How am I doing? How is the company doing? What are our like uh, achievements in the past? Uh, what are what's going on right now? What we're doing next? You need to be able to communicate basically what you're doing. Uh, the second thing is that what you communicate, you need to be able to execute. No, no big secrets here applies to several other type of companies as well. But basically, communicate and execute. And once you have executed, hopefully you deliver some results, positive ones. So this is the core loop that you keep repeating all the time. And uh, you repeat this core loop basically by talking to people, whether it's your shareholders or potential new shareholders, just go out there and talk about what you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it, and so on and so on and so on. That's how it goes. Then on the execution side, that's, that's your business that you should know how to run. In, in our case, obviously, it's about making games and getting those games out there. And uh, on the deliverable side, uh, those are the results that will then uh, determine your sort of faith uh, as a public company. So how well you are able to communicate to your shareholders what you have achieved. Uh, and uh, how you communicate that is again, you go out there meeting people, discussing, you put out in our case quarterly reports with all the numbers out there, a little bit of text explaining that what actually happened, what's behind those numbers, those things. Uh, then you have sort of ongoing communication going on, you put out press releases, uh, some of them are regulatory that are required by the rules of the market that you need to press release, some of them are more like actual things that uh, you just want to, everybody to know. And uh, then in the end of the day, all of those will then translate into your share value. So <clears throat> in a nutshell, I think uh, being a public company means that uh, it sort of uh, enables you to focus into your key business because you don't need to worry about the funding side that much. Uh, but it also forces you to focus into your key business because if you fall out from this core loop where you do what you actually said you were about to do, I bet life's going to be pretty difficult for you. 
Um, <clears throat> then about future, uh, what it is for us moving forward. So basically in, in Nitro Games, we have three unique selling points, three differentiating things that we feel set us apart from other companies out there. Uh, we have one of the most experienced teams in Finland. We've been around for 10 years. Uh, uh, we have our own technology we call Nitro Games Platform, which we've been developing for five years now. And uh, we have a unique way of producing these mobile games, which we call our MVP process. Essentially means that we start market testing our games after roughly one week of development. These three USPs we already had existing uh, before we IPO'd. Uh, once we did the IPO, uh, what it enables us to do is to basically split our business into two categories. So on the other hand, uh, we work with uh, other companies in the industry offering our services to them. That's a uh, uh, way for us to work on large projects, uh, large partners, get some revenues, get some recognition. Uh, but with the funds that we raised from IPO, the key thing is that it helps us to self-publish a portfolio of games based on our own IP. Right now we're busy working on a game called Medals of War, uh, which we have launched in certain countries and certain platforms, and there's more countries and platforms still to come, and more games in the pipeline coming after this one. So this is what we're doing essentially with the funds. And uh, our long-term goal is we're a growth company, uh, still for the foreseeable future. And what that means for us is that we want to grow our user base, we obviously want to grow our revenues. Uh, so far, we've had roughly 100% year-on-year revenue growth rate in the company. And we want to increase the recognition of the brand called Nitro Games. And these three are how we are building value into the company and for the shareholders. And uh, <clears throat> I also wanted to touch base a little bit on, on what people often say that why you shouldn't IPO. Uh, when we announced the thing that uh, we plan to go public. Uh, there was quite a few people who were a little bit skeptic about it, to put it politely. Uh, and uh, there's quite a, quite a lot of uh, sort of uh, misconceptions related to, related to IPOing in general, in my opinion. And uh, most of these are something to do with you shouldn't do it yet for whatever the reason. Either it's too expensive, too difficult, your company is too early or whatever it could be. Uh, in my opinion, all of those are bullshit. Uh, if you find the right marketplace, if you find the right audience, uh, and you feel that your company has something to offer for that audience, why not? It's an option you can consider. So I, I would be very careful of not letting any of these topics limit, limit your thinking if you're considering doing something similar. Um, we spoke in the beginning how, how, how we see this as a start. Uh, so basically, We've only been doing this for a short while now, roughly, roughly a little bit more than six months. Uh, but that's our share price development and so on uh, during, <coughs> during the, uh, since the listing. And uh, basically, when we went public in June, uh, after that, there was a short, short period of time when, when uh, like there wasn't much going on with the, with the share price. But suddenly, then after summer, things started developing. Uh, we, we started putting out press releases, communicating how we're doing, how we're opening up new countries with, with medals of war, how we have made some new, new deals on the distribution side, how we made some new deals on the service business side, how we're moving forward, and so on and so on. And uh, <clears throat> I think this is like essentially the thing that uh, uh, you need to prepare for if you want to be a public company it is that like as long as you keep repeating the core loop uh, you will basically get what you deserve if your business goes well it's likely that it will reflect in a very positive uh, development on the share price because end of the day your job is to drive shareholder value, drive value to your shareholders. Then again, if you don't meet the expectations, then you're likely to see the curves going the other direction and so on. So I think it's, it's something that if you're comfortable with the fact that everybody's, everything's out there, uh, your whole company is transparent, everybody knows how you're doing, and you will get exactly uh, what you sort of deserve, uh, then I think it's something that's uh, really good for you. And so far, we've been really happy with the with the first six months of being a public company. But um, <clears throat> to conclude on things, uh, I would like to remind that uh, uh, IPO does not necessarily mean an exit. It, it might be, it definitely was that, not that for us. Uh, it, it's a new start for us, something that helps us to take the company to the next level. And in the end of the day, 
I think when it comes to everything related to fundraising, uh, one, one thing that we should all remember that in the end of the day, the key thing that why we are in this business is making awesome things called games with awesome people. So, so you want to make sure that whatever you do on the fundraising side or, or any, anything else, uh, you want to make sure that that helps you to make great products with great people and then that's how success will come in the long term. So that's our story in a nutshell. Uh, any questions? I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Um, I think in terms of internal culture, one big thing that definitely changed was that uh, we started that discussing a lot more about how we are being perceived. So uh, when you're a private company, uh, especially for those team members who are not out there traveling and meeting people and so on, uh, it, it might, be, might be that people very easily get into the sort of uh, office circles and they uh, might even sort of not forget the fact that there's a big world out there that you are servicing with your products, but uh, the thinking might very easily go into relatively narrow space. So that caused a lot more discussion about like, we're doing things like this, how are these perceived and uh, what's happening in the future and all those things. So I think it, it made everything more open again. So also, also both publicly, but also internally, everything became more open. Thank you so much for sharing. <coughs> uh, I have two questions. Question number one is, um, after going public, you don't feel that you will be sharing a lot of information with competitors and the outside world? Like I believe being public means that every single thing that you are even planning to do mm -hmm. will be public. So yeah. is, is, that, uh, is that fine? So mainly that. Yeah. Uh, well, well, that's true because uh, the sort of uh, we call them market abuse regulations uh, have pretty strict rules that uh, you need you need to be very open about things that might have an impact on share price, so which results in you having the press release, all sorts of things uh, to the to the market. Uh, but we've never really had a problem with that because uh, our mindset had always been that uh, we actually love telling people how we're doing and why we're doing things uh, because we feel that if you know we share something that how, how we're performing or or what led into what and how we're doing things if somebody can learn from that be it good or bad fine that serves everybody so we don't really have a problem with sharing whether it's something positive or negative so so that wasn't really an issue for us but if your company culture is more about protecting something then then it might be an issue Being public means that uh, things became slower and moving uh, with like uh, any anything like uh, partnerships, working with others, or you remained like agile and uh, like a startup mentality. Um, I think you could almost say that certain things became quicker uh, because. Uh, uh, especially if it's something where you need to, you know, negotiate because you can essentially skip through all the due diligence and so on uh, because everything is out there available, so go and read it, please. So a uh, lot of processes became quicker in that sense. Uh, we have tried to make sure that while since the IPO we've grown pretty heavily, we're now more than 40 people in two studios in Finland, uh, we've tried to make sure that we maintain as agile as possible moving forward, but I, I haven't really seen uh, it slowing anything down. More, more more likely kind of being sort of like a, like a good pacer for the whole company because this is what we've communicated that we're about to do. We better now deliver. So it sort of keeps everybody focused in delivering. <laughs> 